This is a Star Wars toy with a jet engine on it. And this is a Halo toy with a gas engine in it. And this is a real racing drag strip. That's right, in this video, two of the greatest science fiction franchises of all time will go head to head in order to see which iconic children's toy can reach stupidly dangerous enough speeds to achieve victory and prove once and for all which YouTube channel is best. Joel Creates or Impact Props. Now that's where we're going, but I think this all started on the toilet. Having just watched Brad's latest gas-powered Warthog video, I jokingly asked him if he wanted to race the jet-powered land speeder that I had built a few months ago, and Brad said yes, and he wasn't joking. You see, Brad has friends at the amazing Tulsa Raceway Park that were totally game to let us use their drag strip. Provided, of course, we sign waivers saying that we are responsible for whatever idiotic consequences we inevitably encounter. So we set the date, but there was just one big problem. My jet-powered land speeder's wheels were barely modified from their original, kid-focused design, meaning that even at a few miles an hour, it handled the jet power poorly. Also, I didn't have a jet engine anymore. Okay, two problems. With just over two weeks before the 12-hour drive to Tulsa, I now had zero time for mistakes. So I immediately messaged Daps to see if I could borrow his jet engine again and got on Marketplace to look for a used mountain board. Because it's about the cheapest way to upgrade my land speeder for the drag strip. And here's why. When you're driving a car, you turn the steering wheel a lot while going slowly, like in a parking lot, but at high speeds, even a tiny bit of steering input results in a giant change of direction on the road. The stock steering on the land speeder is far too wobbly, loose, and sensitive for anything above parking lot speeds. But mountain boards are different. Instead of using a steering wheel, they turn when the rider shifts their weight. And you can decrease the sensitivity of the steering by using a stiffer bushing and tightening it down as much as possible. By mounting the chopped board further forward, we can also increase the wheelbase and stability, and it even came with its own brakes. For even greater stability, I mounted the other two wheels to a wide rear axle assembly that sat even further back than the stock one. Now, no matter how well this thing rolls, it still needs something to push it, and that's where I hit a bit of a snag. Because of some shipping issues, the jet engine was not gonna make it on time. Now, I'm not gonna hire someone to push me down the track, so I reached out to the best jet guy on YouTube, Matt from the channel Warped Perception. Now, Matt had just gotten back from strapping seven jets to a car for Mr. Beast, and just so happened to have an engine that I could borrow, except that this one was twice as powerful. And since he's an engineering genius, I asked him if this was a bad idea, and here's what he had to say. It's like, great. The fact that it's low to the ground, in case those wheels fail, it'll become a sled. And I think you have enough thrust where, man, it'll keep on pushing you even with no wheel. That's crazy that you're gonna get into that thing. Hey, that's legit, man. Yeah, that's pretty ingenious there. Surprisingly, he liked it, but he did have a few concerns. Scooter tires might be better. After he graciously welded me a quick mount bracket, I left in search of last minute tires. So Matt wasn't super confident in the quality of the current tires that I got off the mountain board, and frankly, I'm not either. Since they have a bulge, it's not a good idea, especially with the speeds that we might be reaching with this new massive jet engine. Of course, nobody makes higher quality tires on short notice than a random Razor scooters that you buy off of Facebook Marketplace. These not only had smoother tread, but didn't have a sketchy bulge in them like the mountain board tires did. So I swapped them, added more supports for the stronger engine, and the next day I was in the car with my little brother, who's bigger than me, on our way to Tulsa, and hopefully a safe victory. And 12 short hours later, we pulled up to Brad's. Hi, uh, Joel Creates YouTube channel. <laughs> and now that we were finally here, it was time to uh, do some more work. I switched the higher pressure tires to the rear, rebalanced them, and aligned the steering as straight as possible, utilizing the highly technical push test. It's very stable. Mine, I'm gonna be like <laughs> Then I tried to mount the gas tank. It touches the ground. So we zip tied it to the dashboard. Of course, Brad's Warthog was ready to go the moment we arrived, so when I was doing things like checking the jet engine connections, he definitely wasn't driving around the neighborhood over and over again trying to figure out issues with his carburetor. It was a fever dream of last minute preparatory camaraderie, and despite my pounding sleep deprivation headache, I loved it. I've been having lots of problems too, you're not the only one. Oh, dude, just talk to your doctor about that. <laughs> we were three dudes in a garage working on something special. The fictional but significant worlds of both Star Wars and Halo held precious space in the adolescent archives of my brain. 
These great heroes and their journeys meant something to all of us, and those journeys were expedited by these iconic rides. Yes, they were toys, but by infusing them with our adult efforts, we were revivifying cherished memories, creating something ridiculously fun, and positing a worthy challenge. What would become of our time at the track? Did we have the skill and discipline to pilot these sketchy vehicles to their full potential? I drifted to sleep that final night, buzzing with anticipation. Now one day I hope to put three real jet engines on this thing, take it to the desert for the ultimate Tatooine high speed test. But before I can do something like that, I need to take a step in preparation. And having twice the power and improved wheels at a real drag strip is a great way to do that. But if you still want to see the three engines, then please like, share, subscribe, comment, and while you're commenting, let me know what your predictions are. Who do you think is going to win this race? After a solid two weeks of preparation, we were finally here, oh, and baby. it felt good. Oh, 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 oh! All right, I'll take right, you take left. The land speeder was ready to rock. Minus, of course, the engine. Hey, Chief, check this out. $5,000 jet engine. Chief seemed a little too comfortable with the engine, but I think he was worried about me. <laughs> so much. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> with engine mounted, I just hoped the thing would start up. And it did. Oh, baby! You wanna hear it? You wanna hear it? Oh, oh my, what'd I tell you? Well, it's loud, but it's is it loud. fast? We don't know. And Brad was right. Because I had never ridden this thing above running speed, we had no idea how it would handle. So I decided to gear up and do a solo warm up run before our first race. Any final thoughts? My mind is like blanking out to prepare for this. To Focus as much as possible to not die. Where's the starting line? After some helpful advice from Chief, I throttled up, the turbine built power, and the wheels slowly began to turn. There are faster ways to start than this, by the way, but since this was my first run, I didn't want to push it. The speeder felt good. It even felt pretty stable. But as I climbed in speed, I was understandably cautious. What if it handled fine until, at a certain speed, it had a runaway speed wobble? There was no guarantee that I could recover from instability once it was introduced. And that was scary. But even though I was playing it safe, I still managed to hit 50 miles per hour on my first run. Your brother's a maniac! Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Runs in the family. <laughs> that was interesting. What was your top speed? I hit 50. Did you actually? Oh yeah. Oh my. I think I'm gonna tighten up the front bushing. But other than that, it feels good. <laughs> How'd it look? Looks awesome. Uh, it also looked like I'm probably going to beat you. In the, in the, and the low end. In all the ends. Now we knew that Brad would likely have a quicker start. So the question was, could I catch up to him? And how long would that take? An eighth mile? A quarter mile? A half? All right, so for our first race, should we do the, the quarter or the eighth? The quarter. But you're going to have me in the eighth for sure. We decided to start with a quarter mile race. Then we would do a second race with the distance depending on how the first race went. Then we would do a top speed test of my land speeder. And then we'd do a mystery race that you really don't want to miss. Now, I told Chief to start us as soon as my wheels started moving, since it takes a while for my jet engine to build power, but he was a little slow on the draw. Even with my head start, Brad instantly pulled ahead, and something strange happened inside me. Suddenly, I wasn't worried about safety or handling or any of that stuff. All I could think about now was catching up with Brad before he reached those quarter mile signs in the distance. So, oh, no! I did. I was not expecting it to pick up that well. Like, that you're seeing how qu quickly yours took off. Did I get you in the eighth? Do you, do you know? I think it was close. Okay, so I underestimated my power. I underestimated my power. I underestimated my power. <laughs> <laughs> Joel's top speed was 60, right, Joel? Now it's time for the eighth mile, because I think I might have beaten you in that one. I don't know. I'm honestly really curious. We now knew that the land speeder could obliterate the warthog in the quarter mile but an eighth was half the distance. And with a proper start, could I close that gap? Now I could tell you what it felt like to try and catch Brad before he passed those orange eighth mile markers, but I'll just let the footage speak for itself. Uh, referee? Yeah, what do you want to do, like a, like a 16th? <laughs> 
With a clear victor, we headed back, but before I could do my top speed test, there was a surprise waiting for me back at the start. Hey! You made it! My parents, who lived a lot closer than I did, had driven out to watch. Which is good, because my mom has some medical training, and I was about to try and hit interstate speeds on a children's toy. I was intimidated. I've been in enough crashes and wipeouts to know that the consequences of such are anything but imaginary. But I knew the track, and I knew the land speeder. I had prepared as best I could in the given time frame, and now all that I could do was start the land speeder as far back as possible, build power until the brakes gave out, then hold that trigger down until I was sure I had left everything on the track. On my final top speed run, I kept the throttle pinned well beyond the quarter mile mark, squeezing every last bit of power out of the turbine until the speedometer read 71 miles per hour. And suddenly, the wise words of Jedi Master Obi Paul Kenobi echoed over the horizon. Joel creates. You fing did it, bro. You fing did it. Now for the mystery race, Brad desperately wanted to win something, and since he has a fancy truck with a Hemi, he thought he could beat my Subaru. No, I think it's turbocharged. Uh, it'll destroy your truck. No, no, no. Yeah, bet. A Hemi. No, I will beat Hemi. you. Yeah, okay, now we're doing that. So while my hatchback confiscates his last shred of dignity, let me tell you that after over a decade of making content, Brad is only 30,000 subscribers away from a million. That's less than 10% of my viewers. Please, let's get Brad to a million. He's a great guy, he makes great stuff, and he could really use a win. Huge thanks to everybody who made this possible, especially Matt from Warped Perception and my little big brother Charles. Thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.